let's go. Rapidly growing. Non-native tree species. Consuming. Alien tree species. Adapting. Exotic species. They conquer. Forest fire. Education is very important. Invasive species. Strong. Bug beetle attack. Risk. Alien or a non-native. Resistance. Heat. Timber market. Ecosystem services, recreational use, pests, jeopardizing local economies, perception, public biodiversity, urban trees, resilience, future, climate change, global change, change, and devastating entire ecosystems. We are talking about Alp Trees. That's an Interreg Alpine Space funded project. Welcome to the sixth episode of our Alp Trees podcast series. It's Thursday, 16th of September 2021, and today we will talk about sharing the knowledge of non native trees in the alpine space. In the Alp Trees project, there is a big chance as well as a challenge to get our results and collected knowledge across to experts, stakeholders, as well as to the general public. Scientific knowledge that was generated over the last 20 months in collaboration with our partners from Slovenia, France, Italy, Germany and Austria. Today, we are glad to have some experts with us who already gained experience in sharing this knowledge within the Alpine space. That is Alexander Marinček and Alsa Alagic from the Slovenian Forestry Institute. Hi. Hello. Sharing the knowledge also implies the creation of material for teachers and students alike that can be passed on to the next generations of teachers and pupils. As an expert on education, we welcome Matthias Kovac from the University College of Teacher Education Graz in Styria, Austria. Hello. And project leader Katharina Lapin from the Federal Research and Training Center for Forests, Natural Hazards and Landscape at the BFW Austria. Hello and welcome to our podcast on knowledge transfer. Uh, thank you, Petra, for the introduction and for joining us. You also have a quite important role in the Alpes project as the communication officer. <laughs> I would like to uh, guide you today through this podcast and uh, maybe share some experiences which we collected in the Alpes project. Maybe these experiences will be important for others who uh, want to join the Interreg Alpine Space Program in their projects and also on how to communicate and how to deal with uh, non-native tree species particularly because they are kind of tricky when you're communicating the situation on it. Um, so Alexander, maybe can you explain um, in the project you were leading the work package knowledge transfer, right? Which included a lot of communication with stakeholders, but also communicating our results to the public and to the interested uh, citizens of the Alpine space. What was um, the main challenge for you uh, in, in this work package and how did you communicate about non-native tree species in this project? Uh, hi again to everyone. Thank you, Katerina. Yes, we live in an age of the internet and our society is characterized by a large flow of uh, information, uh, which flows in a very short time. So the main challenge, in my opinion, was first how to get all the main uh, really important scientific uh, results and also the crucial information which we want to share with other experts and also with interested public. Uh, the second challenge was uh, to form all the available information in a shape that would be clear, short, and also interesting to expert and the public. Uh, you can all, always gather a lot of important results, but if you don't pack them in a very attractive shape or a message, you cannot sh uh, you cannot reach as many people as you want or you reach them, but they, they are found uh, all your information and all your knowledge that you gathered, not very interesting. So uh, we, we tried to get the public through all the channels that are available. This is classical from newspaper, then uh, via uh, Facebook or uh, social medias, also our site, all the channels that are common in uh, communication with the public. Also, we, we made in the, our project three talks. Those were public events when we talk uh, directly to people and hear them and talk to them 
And I think it's a combination when reaching the public is, I think it's crucial for, for such projects. That's absolutely true. It is not easy to reach all those target groups. So one of our first challenges was to identify the different target groups which we want to communicate to. And it really goes from, uh, uh, from, from public authorities to the citizens, uh, teachers and, and schools. And we used a lot of different material uh, to communicate. Aisha, from your experience in the project, what went good and what went bad when communicating with different target groups? And what was your favorite target groups to, to talk to? Hello again from my side as well. Uh, thank you, Katarina. Well, for me, because I was mostly involved in gathering all this scientific data, it was good to hear uh, different opinions from professional from different areas. So like foresters, nature conservationists on the other side, because here I think uh, maybe are the biggest challenges, uh, uh, biggest gaps to overcome. And uh, uh, we need to build on trust and on scientific arguments to see how to say the best, the future way for us to go ahead. For me, it was great to be also creative in a way as making this uh, educational postcard, for example, to just uh, have a look into, have a neutral perspective to most common non-native trees and somehow highlight the good things, the bad things, uh, um, and uh, what we want to communicate, the most important uh, things that we want to communicate to the public. <laughs> so yeah, thank you. We were very lucky in the project that we had a true expert on education with us. Uh, Matthias, you are um, very familiar with different methods, how to build this trust, I should just mention, which is so important also for our project. One of our um, specific objectives is, of course, to increase the knowledge on non-native tree species and um, show the different perspectives you can have on non-natives and to increase the knowledge and also to develop new strategies and science-based solutions. But a very big uh, specific objective of the Altris project was to increase the public awareness and, to, and the capacity building and the responsible use of non-native tree species, and especially through the dialogue between science and citizens. So you as an expert on education have joined us in the project and what are your tips when you want to build trust in this different and difficult environment of um, communicating science to the public or to youngsters? Yeah, hello again. Uh, thank you for the invitation. So thanks for the interesting question. Um, I worked with teacher candidates <coughs> to develop teaching materials, mostly for secondary school students. And uh, often the main challenge of developing educational materials is to simplify the scientific knowledge uh, to the level that uh, secondary school students can understand it and that they are motivated to, to learn about it and um, to increase motivation to learn about non-native and native tree species. I think first is um, that uh, teaching materials use different methods that um, it changes the methods uh, from time to time, and uh, that uh, secondary school students can do um, research-based um, inquiries also, and that there are games, role plays, uh, field trips uh, that can be included in the teaching materials. So it's not just open the book and do the exercise, but that they can discover things by their own. That is uh, often the, the, the most challenge because uh, motivation is a key to learn also for secondary school students and also for older people, of course. In the time of the internet, it's very tempting to just quickly Google something and believe that what I've just read is, is all and that's the science behind it. How do we as experts or also in the project 
uh, in internet projects like the Alcatraz projects, the difficulties in building trust uh, through um, in science communication. So, so for me, it's of course, internet is where we're tempting. And, um, but every student, the young people use internet very much. And uh, of course they are building trust. They are, there's the problem of fake news, uh, which news you can, you can trust on. And media competences is also very important to learn and um, to learn that the students know which media they can trust, they can use, they, uh, they can critique, criticize. And the other point is also, I think, connecting young people with nature, especially for this topic, is very important. So to go out, and it's another experience to reconnect with nature than just uh, use internet to get scientific knowledge. And also for memorizing knowledge, it's very important to learn with different senses. So not just see it when I open the computer, I can see, I can read, but when I'm out, I can feel it, I can smell it. And uh, learning with different senses is also a key issue for uh, um, motivating learning uh, methods and issues. As Matthias mentioned, to simplify the message is one method to get a complicated scientific result um, communicating to the public, right? So in case of the Alpris project, the, the message might be sometimes for people who don't work with non-native tree species day in, day out, a bit more challenging because it's quite a complicated message. Uh, our results show that non-native tree species have site-specific responses on their invasiveness, there's places where you should, you can and you should maybe even plant it, where they have a lot of benefits, and then there are places uh, where they are a risk to the biodiversity and the ecosystem services of a certain area. Alexander, what do you think? Um, do you think that our stakeholders in the communication pathway um, of this project um, agree with us on this message or did you find it complicated to, to talk to the, our target groups in such a, let's say, complicated, simplified message? Or do you think, was it already simple enough to communicate? Yeah, we should know that people who came to our public events or the, our stakeholders were already interested in this topic. So they, they had some knowledge and they have some knowledge about it. I think that our attempt to simplify our uh, knowledge or our information was, uh, we were successful. The people are aware of non-native tree species, the problematics, the issues. It's a project for, for a scientific or a professional project for, for uh, different stakeholders, not just for a science. So I think we were able to simplify the, our message, yes. Hitcher, when you started the Alpris project, you were one of those citizens who barely had an understanding for the difference between native and non-native tree species and the negative and positive impacts they can have. After working so hard on this project, what's your um, feeling? What are the responses from the public? Because you have been working a lot with uh, the public through social media channels. Yeah, thank you, Katarina. And the people from the public uh, that we reach through social media that come back to us, they are mainly uh, experts who want to know more specific scientific facts about non-native trees, or they are people who have a garden, who have a forest, who have a recent problem. What should I do with the palovnia in my garden? and they want to have um, tips. The, the, these are the concerns of the people that really come actively back to us, uh, who we reach through our emails or our social media activity. I look through the, the teaching material from your teachers, Matthias, and it's very interesting, uh, the didactics, how you can uh, tell very young people and uh, youth and adults uh, what language do you use? 
to bring the problems, the chances and risks of non-native trees across. And I think that's a very new language and a very new approach that we have, um, we as communicators of science uh, have to take because it's very complex not to talk about black and white, but to show all the shades between. So uh, where non-native trees are located, under which circumstances they may be a risk to the environment environment. And I'm very happy that uh, your teachers, uh, colleagues, uh, they, they manage this uh, so well. And my question also would be, um, how can the latest results of research with non-native trees can then in the end be implemented into the official national school materials? How long does it take that it's implemented into the, the real uh, teaching materials? That's a very interesting question indeed. I think the first step what we can do is first to provide teaching materials and to do some publicity among teachers in practice so that they use the teaching material. Um, besides of the curriculum, they have some space often, sometimes it depends. Uh, to uh, introduce some new methods, some new topics, and uh, when they have time, the teachers, so they can, they can use it, the materials, and work with it. That was, would be the first step. Of course, the step, second step can be to introduce uh, the topic in the curriculum. It's, um, it's, of course, it's more difficult because um, you have to talk with the curriculum makers of the national governments. And um, we have a national curriculum in Austria, so that and the curriculum is revised regularly, but not every year. Every three, four years, we have a new curriculum, four or five years. And then the people in charge of the curriculum revisions should be aware of uh, the new topics to introduce. But of course, there are other interests to introduce other topics. And sometimes the curriculum is all already overloaded for the teachers. So um, it's also a question what is important to teach, what is less important, and there are different interests. But uh, to introduce the topic in the curriculum, um, of course, should have a discussion between scientific and uh, the curriculum makers, not only the teachers, because that's the curriculum makers who the policy makers who are in charge of the curriculum and the teachers just take the curriculum and um, make it into action. But as I said, the first step would to exchange with the teachers because they have some space to modify curriculum, there are some time and to introduce also and to work with the materials if they are very interesting and motivating for the students. One of our challenges in a transnational uh, project is that there's a lot of information not available in the local languages. So we have put a lot of effort in translating and perhaps Aisha, can you uh, tell from your experience um, the languages spoken in the Alpine space and how did we deal with all those translations in the Alpine space interreg project Altrice? Uh, thank you, Katarina. Well, for me, it's good that I enjoy translating. <laughs> but as I am a biologist, um, I also had some difficulties with some uh, forestry expressions. So I was just um, checking with my colleagues from this project that are more professionals in this area to find proper words. So this was, uh, of course, a challenge. And otherwise, just, um, yeah, all the project partners need to um, invest their time uh, to also translate all the, <laughs> all the things that we need to uh, translate, such as newsletters, handbooks, uh, postcards, everything else. Um, and yeah, this is also important that all the project partners are communicating among, well, among, with each other and, yeah. <laughs> this is it. So the lessons learned from the knowledge transfer mechanisms we used and the, all the activities we did in this project, 
is also that we have to invest a lot of time to translating uh, our material, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, this is a, a big, big part besides the data collection, which was also a big workload. Yeah. Yeah, so this program showed us very well that the transnational cooperation is absolutely needed to get complicated messages um, transported to the public, to other stakeholders, and to make it accessible through different uh, language and knowledge levels. Um, I think uh, we did sometimes quite a good job on this <laughs> in this project. Some things went very well, some are still in progress, and then there are several things that for sure also could be improved in future. Alexander, do you, when you think about those things that didn't went well, <laughs> do you have something on your mind uh, where we can maybe learn from our failures? Yes, it's never, it's perfect. But we are now in the last third of the project duration and uh, we must admit that COVID situation made our work more difficult for sure. Somehow we are, we are managing this situation and we are trying to get the best out of the situation. For sure, always a place for for better, for better, for improvements. But I think that the project was well planned from the beginning. We stick to the plan, and so far I think that there is nothing crucial that I would like to do different. Uh, all, uh, but it showed up that some pilot actions, where interested public was involved, uh, were successfully performed and gave nice results. I think pilot actions and involving people is something that needs to be very important, uh, needs to be very important part in every, in every project. We will have an interesting podcast coming up also on the five pilot actions we have produced in this uh, project, Alptrix, where we will talk more about the details uh, which include uh, public engagement in transporting the message of non-native tree species. So far, we can share that from this project, we learned that it's uh, absolutely important to have a communication strategy upfront. Some key elements of our communication strategies are that you provide uh, valuable input for the governance strategies and that you help with the communication to optimize the management of the non-native tree species and also share the tips on sustainable and cost-efficient way how to manage it. And I think one key element of our strategy was to integrate as many target groups as possible. So when we think about those lessons learned uh, from our project, what is the first thing that comes to your mind, uh, Matthias? Of course, it's, it's good to have the strategy at the beginning uh, of the project. For example, what we have talked about for the curriculum making, you have to know which people to approach who are responsible for curriculum making and which time frame they have because they have very large time frames to change the curriculum they work for years on it depending on the curriculum then there are the textbooks to change also and textbooks come out they are published every three four five years and would be good of course to have, have topics on um, up trees, non-native uh, trees, species in textbooks also, how we can introduce the scientific topics, simplify it, and bring it also to textbooks. Of course, today teachers use more and more internet sources, not rely only on textbooks. Then we have teaching materials that we can provide on internet that are easier to use, more quickly to use, and more easier also to prepare and uh, to get access also. And uh, so there are several steps to communicate the results to citizens, to students, and to other interested people. Mm, and I think so there are several steps to, to prepare at the beginning of the project and uh, to share the knowledge with citizens and with students, which is very enriching, I think, and we can learn a lot from each other. And students, of course, even if it's a complicated topic, as you told, uh, complex matters, but world is not black and white. We have complex topics and um, yeah, it's a challenge to simplify it, but uh, it's also very interesting and enriching. 
Yeah, knowledge is basically something that we are very keen of. Uh, we, one of our outputs is to build also the knowledge hub on non-native tree species, which will give um, the access to everyone, um, to all different material we have produced uh, and also which material which will be produced in future, hopefully, on this topic. I learned from this project is that new knowledge comes up and you have to rethink something from time to time. Something where you always thought it is this way, uh, maybe that, for example, non-native tree species are a risk to the environment. Now, after working one and a half years really intensively on this topic and talking to so many stakeholders uh, who work with non-native tree species day in, day out, we know that it's very species specific. Some species uh, show uh, risks, some don't, and that you have to be very careful and keep monitoring them and keep gaining new knowledge and see how they develop and how they, and then also react on those developments in future. So I think uh, one lesson learned here is that you never stop learning <laughs> and that you should maybe keep uh, an eye on the updates uh, from science all the time so that you can also re-evaluate the state of your, of your knowledge. Alexander, you had um, for sure something to share on this matter from the practical, technical side of you. What have I learned from the Alptris project? Yeah, please. Oh, <laughs> yes. I, I have learned in these two years uh, that people like trees. They think about trees and they, they care mm -hmm. about them. Also, I have learned that it's necessary to go into a public Although we don't want to, as a scientist, I'm, I'm talking just on a Congress from time to time, and uh, there is different kind of public. But yes, it's crucial to go out uh, to share the ideas and talk with people. Uh, I have found workshops in, the, in interaction with people and the public in uh, three talks very useful. Uh, yes, I think uh, we should go out, get exposed in public more often. This would uh, make us better speakers and performers, and also uh, this make our project more valuable, more important. And this should be, be a part of our job. Otherwise, the science is not in the, the service of public. Or work together with people who really enjoy talking to the public <laughs> and who know the, the instruments, how to communicate scientific results to the public. That's also a trick we might share uh, with others. Aisha, what the lessons you have learned from this project so far? Yes, I just want to say that um, uh, as uh, I noticed from our workshops that Slovenia is maybe <laughs> the the most against planting non-native trees but as you dive into this topic you see why people planted them there are so many also good sides of nnts like they were used for medicinal use agroforestry windbreaks uh, reforestation erosion control uh, tea floors honey production but of course you have to be careful for the red alarms so for the trees that uh, regenerate quickly even though this could also be a good quality in some cases but not in this one um, and with trees that uh, transmit a lot of pests and diseases of course that can be transmitted to our native trees and trees that are that are hard to manage if they really um, go out of control so the thing that I learned is that we have a lot of NNTs especially in urban areas but these NNTs could be important in um, uh, fighting the climate changes. So um, we need to fill these knowledge gaps that we saw with more research um, and really consider which um, non-native trees could be um, contributing to our forest management. Um, yeah. And this is it. This is uh, one of the most important things. And also to educate forest owners uh, so they can recognize NNTs and also manage them properly. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You concluded very well what the Alpris project found out. And we also 
have reached already the end of our podcast. So thank you very much for being here with us today and for sharing some of your experience on knowledge transfer with very different target groups. So thanks again for joining us for this podcast. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.